Hi there, Saturn class. This afternoon you're going to listen to Coyote Steel's Fire. So I'm going to read to you this Native American legend. The Native American tribes people love to tell stories and the stories get handed down through generations and generations. And Coyote was seen as a bit of a trickster. He was also seen as a quite a clever character. And in this particular story, he steals fire to save the freezing tribes people who have suffered another cold and harsh winter. But in order to steal the fire, he has to go to visit the monstrous fire beings. And so we learn from this story how Coyote um, came to look the way he does. And also there are some other animals who have features. And this is apparently, according to Native American legend, how they got their features. Here we go. Long ago, when man, when man's time upon the world had barely begun, there were days which were full of joy and laughter. These days, these were the days when the rains of spring brought, brought life to the land, where the bright sun of summer bathed all, all in its warmth, and the fruits of autumn shared their bounty with the people. But no time lasts forever, and as the days grew shorter, and the autumn mists grew cooler, the sounds of laughter began to fade. Winter was coming, and man was afraid. Winter was a cruel season. Before its bitter chill had faded from the land, it would have taken from the tribe many of its children and elders. So they were quite frightened of winter, because it, was, it wasn't nice to live in winter. Quite often people died because of the cold. One day, when frosts of winter were beginning to fade, Coyote was passing a human village. Coyote, like the rest of the animals, had no need for fire, so the subject rarely touched his thoughts. Yet, Coyote was not without curiosity, and as he passed the village, he heard a song coming from the village and paused to listen. The song was one of mourning, sung for the young and old who had been lost that winter. The sun has returned, Coyote overheard one man say. Feel how it heats our skin and warms the soil upon which we stand. Had the sun not left us, we would not be singing these songs of mourning. Yes, said another man, if only the sun could share some of its fire. If only we had a piece of the sun to warm our teepees during the winter. On hearing these words, Coyote felt sorry for man and he resolved to help them. Not far from these lands was a mountain. Coyote knew that at the top of this mountain dwelt three fire beings. These creatures held the fire of earth captive. They guarded it selfishly, not wanting to share it with any other, lest others become as powerful or as strong as they were. Coyote would steal the fire from this mountain. So those fire beings are not very friendly people. They're selfish, they don't want to share because they're worried that other people will become more powerful than they. So Coyote went to the mountain and crept to its top. At the summit, he saw a great fire blazing. Around these flames sat the fire beings guarding their prize. As Coyote approached, a small twig broke underfoot betraying his arrival. At the sound, the fire beings leapt to their feet. Coyote froze. A thief, they called as one. A thief is here to steal our precious fire. Cold eyes glinted as they searched around their campsite, sharp talons readied to snatch out at any thief. Then, peering closer into the shadows, the third fire being spotted him. There! But, Coyote had walked to the top of the mountain on all fours. When the fire beings saw him, they saw an ordinary coyote skulking past their camp. It is no one, said the first fire being. It is nothing, said the second fire being. Satisfied that they were alone, the three creatures returned to their vigil around the fire. Coyote did not flee down the mountain, but remained and watched the three fire beings tend to the fire. When the fire grew hungry, he saw that they fed it pine cones or dry branches. 
He saw how, at times, a stray spark might leap from the fire, or a trickle of flame might try to escape into a nearby patch of grass. When this happened, the fire beings would leap up and furiously stamp on these runaway flames. When the fire had retreated, the fire beings would sit down again and continue their watch. Coyote saw that there was fire enough for all of man and the fire beings. These miserly creatures guard their treasure too well, Coyote reflected. So he's noticed that fire spreads and so it's, it would be easy to take some fire from them and they are just being very, very selfish and that word miserly and being grumpy and selfish. As the sun retreated past the distant hills, Coyote remained near the camp. Night fell and two of the fire beings stood up, stretched their weary arms and withdrew to sleep in a nearby teepee. The third fire being remained by the fire, alert and on guard. At no time during the night was the fire left alone. Two fire beings slept while the other waited on guard. The only opportunity to seize the flame came early in the morning. As the first light of dawn peered over the horizon, the lone fire being called out to another to take their turn. No noise or movement came from the teepees, so the fire being called out again. Sister, sister, get up and watch the fire. Yes, I heard, I heard, came the response. I am coming. This fire being would then emerge from the teepee, wiping the dreams of sleep from their eyes. But so slow were they in arising that the other being had already left their place of watch. Coyote knew that if the fire was to be stolen, this would be the time. On silent feet, Coyote raced down the mountain. There he called together all of his friends among the animals. He spoke of man and how, without fire, the cruel cold of winter was something that he feared. He told of the nearby fire on the mountain top and its warmth and brightness. He said that this fire could be stolen and shared with hairless man, so that winter was not a time to be afraid. The animals heard Coyote's plan and they readily agreed to help him. Man would have fire. Later that day, Coyote stealthily returned to the mountain top and padded around the fire. At his approach, a dry branch cracked under his feet and called out in protest. Immediately, the three fire beings were upon their feet. A thief! they cried as one. A thief is here to steal our precious fire. Their cold eyes swept across their surroundings. Their vicious talons were poised, ready to strike. Then, staring deep into the shadows, the third fire being spied Coyote. There, she called. But as before, Coyote had climbed the mountain on all fours. What the sisters saw was an ordinary Coyote happening past. It is nobody, said the first fire being. It is nothing, agreed the second. Satisfied that they were alone, the fire beings seated themselves and continued their vigil. In the shadows, Coyote watched and waited. Before long, the sun fell behind the distant hills and the skies grew dark. Two of the fire beings left the campsite whilst one remained on guard. The hours passed, and although all of the fire beings allowed themselves some sleep, one always remained on guard and vigilant against theft. Then, as the first rays of sun eventually crept over the horizon, the fire being on watch called out to another to take her place. No sound came from the teepee. Sister, the guardian fire being called out. Sister, get up and watch the fire. Yes, I heard, I heard, came the response. I am coming. At that, the fire being on guard stood up, stretched their stiff limbs and turned for the comfort of the teepee. Seizing his moment, Coyote leapt forth and snatched a flaming coal from the unguarded fire. Thief! a voice called out behind. A thief has our fire! Coyote raced down the mountain, followed by the sounds of the fire beings giving chase. Near the bottom of the mountain, he could see the rest of the animals clustered near, each eager to help in their turn. Coyote felt one of the fire beings grasp at his tail, and he flung the coal forward. Quick! he yelped. The fingers 
had touched only the tip of his tail, but it was enough to change the hair's white, which is why, to this day, the tips of Coyote's tails are still white. Now, the fire beings pursued Squirrel, who had caught the falling fire. Squirrel carried the coal on her back as she fled. The heat was such that her tail curled up, and that is why, to this day, the tails of squirrels are curled. Now, the fire beings pursued... Whoops. Before the fire beings could stop Squirrel, she threw it further. Now, it was with Chipmunk. The fire beings approached, but Chipmunk stood frozen to the spot. Then, at the last moment, she took flight. As she turned, a fire being clawed at her back. To this day, three marks remain, striping down the length of each chipmunk's back. The fire was then thrown to Frog, who swallowed it and hopped away as fast as he could. As he did so, a fire being snatched at his tail, tearing it from his body. This is why today no frog bears a tail. To escape, Frog swam across a wide river, but as he clambered onto the muddy bank from the far side, he saw that he was beaten. A fire being waited before him. Too tired to throw the fire back to one of the animals, too weary to swim back across the river, Frog spat the fire on wood, and wood swallowed it whole. The three fire, but the three fire beings gathered around wood. Give it back, they demanded, but wood did not. The fire, be the fire beings promised wood gifts to return the fire, but it did not. They sang to wood, they, tr they threatened wood, and they beat wood, but no fire came forth. Eventually, not knowing what else to do, the fire beings took their leave and went reluctantly back to their mountain. Wood had fire, but Coyote knew how to get fire out of wood. He went to the nearby village. There he showed man how to rub two dry sticks together until sparks came. Then. He showed them how adding dry moss and chips of wood to these sparks would create a trickle of flame. From that day, man knew how to use fire. He cooked his meat, he heated his home, and the winters were never as cruel again. <laughs>